Hi, my name is Doug and I'm going to show you how to install, configure, and start using PA File Site. The download um, goes pretty quickly and the installation and configuration is just about as fast. Download complete. Let's start the install. We don't need our browser open, so I'll just close that. This is your typical next, next, next install. I'm going to install the Microsoft SQL Server client drivers, client libraries. Uh, by default, the product will install all of its data in an embedded database, which works really well. Um, if you've got large numbers of servers that you're monitoring, you might want to switch and have the product store its data in SQL Server. And you can make that switch anytime you like. Okay, install is done. Let's get the product started. The very first time you start it up, some SSL certificates are generated, and that just takes a few moments. Doesn't take too long, so we'll just wait here until we're told it's finished. And it's finished and now we can go into the product there's nothing being monitored yet so we are going to go ahead and follow this startup wizard the monitoring service by default runs as local system if you think you might want to push satellite monitoring services out to other servers to monitor uh, you can have the service run as a domain admin account which would make that easier um, it's not required and we're going to skip that for the demo. The path we're going to monitor for this demo is a folder called audited folder on the H drive and H is a local drive. The mouse is being driven by the demo now or I'm sorry by the startup wizard just to kind of show you how to add a new monitor. Okay, so we've given it the path that we want to watch and we're told to go through and click these buttons and see the other options. And that's all the wizard does to get us started. We have this uh, warning that's telling us that the monitor can fire actions but nothing is attached so I'm going to go over here to the actions button this is where we could create email actions uh, desktop notifications message boxes uh, pager duty calls and so on uh, for the demo we're just going to use the message box for the demo we're just going to use the message box that's a really good way for testing just to see uh, what's being picked up probably not what you'd want to do in production. <coughs> Cut that out. Okay. So we can see here that we're watching all files in our folder. Uh, we're going to alert on files being created or deleted. Um, I'm also going to have it alert us if files are read. We can do the same thing at the directory level. If you're using PA File Site Ultra, you can also be alerted to files being copied. And this works much better if you have the File Site endpoint installed on the end user computers. You get a lot more information. I'll come back to that in a little bit. This is also a File Site Ultra feature where you can be alerted if X number of files are read, written, deleted, or renamed in Y amount of time. This is a really powerful way to protect the server from malware. For example, if a user were to read 10 files and write 10 files in one minute, um, that's probably not somebody going crazy in Excel or Word. And more likely, it's ransomware going out and reading files, encrypting them, and then writing them back out to the server. So this is a great way to protect against uh, ransomware. 
This is usually something you don't need to mess with. Um, this is this particular box is useful if you just want to make sure you're watching what you think you are and not anything else. So if you expect maybe a thousand activities in a day on your server, you know maybe set this to two thousand or three thousand. Um, and if you end up getting a million activities being recorded, then that would tell you you're probably watching more than you thought you were. Let's look at the ignores really quick. Um, by default, we're going to ignore a lot of the Microsoft Office temporary files. You can add to that. Uh, if you had any specific files or folders that you wanted to ignore, you could add those here. Same thing with users and processes. Um, there's nothing showing up yet because the monitor hasn't run. Uh, processes you might want to ignore would include something like antivirus or backup or a search indexing app. Uh, things that are touching lots of files, but th that's totally expected. So I'm going to hit OK, and if we come over here to the server we're running on, there's the monitor we created. Uh, there's an extra one here that gets created just to collect some basic in inventory information about our server. Let's make this bigger so we can see it. This system details information came from that inventory collector. So, so far our monitor's running and nothing's happening. So let's go out to that folder. Audited folder. Let's go into manufacturing for example and look at our top secret plans to build a spaceship. Okay, we're not going to be building a spaceship, but PA file site just told us something just happened. We'll see that a read of the top secret plans file just happened by user Doug, that's me, and it came from the local computer, 127.001, and Explorer EXE read it. And then we saw another read happen, same file, and this time Word read the file. So we just got told what happened. Uh, semi real time. We can see now on our screen we have a small status just kind of giving us an overview of what's happening on the server. And if we refresh we're going to see recent alerts, things that have just recently happened that FileSite saw. I'm going to connect to a different computer now. So we can see what this looks like when a user comes in from the network. Here is my remote desktop session. And I'm going to connect to the same computer that we're on. And go into the audited folder. I'm going to copy this payroll file. And PA file site has just reported a read happened of the payroll file. This is my user account that I logged in to this other um, remote machine with. It gave the IP address of the computer that just accessed that file. Uh, we call it Lab Beast. And the application, in this case, the server doesn't know what application I'm using on the client computer. So it just has to report either the operating system or a request from the network came in. And we see this new event just got added to the recent alerts. 
I mentioned endpoints earlier, and now we're going to push one out to this client computer that we're using. I've got a couple command lines already prepared just to make the demo go smoother. So we go to the install folder, and then we're going to use Microsoft's PS Exec app to push the PA file site endpoint executable out to our lab beast test server. Uh, the command lines and, and so on that I'm using here are all documented online. So we'll just hurry and get this installed over there. Okay, so the installation is done. And now we're going to actually go and start the endpoint service. And the PA file site endpoint service is now started on this lab beast computer. So let's do another little test. And this time we're going to copy our top secret plans. So remember, I'm a client computer connected to the server. Copy the plans to my computer. And that is not what we wanted to see at all. And we're still recording. OK. We're going to do another test now that the endpoint is installed on the client computer. And this time I'm going to go out and copy our top secret plans for building a spaceship. This time file site's going to ask the endpoint for some additional information so that the alert can tell us more about what's going on. So again we see a read, top secret plans, user account on LabBeast is uh, my account, Doug. There's the machine, the IP address, again, system or network. But this time, we have additional information that came from the endpoint, namely that Explorer EXE was used. The local logged in user is also me. And we find out that the file was read by Explorer, but then it was also written out to my desktop. And because we see the same file going out as we saw come in, a flag gets set saying this was probably a file copy. So this is where those alerts for the copy detection come from. We just saw one file get copied. And if I copy five files, this is going to pop up and send an alert about files being copied. One other thing that's quite powerful is the blocked user list. When a user gets added to the blocked user list, all requests that they make to the server are blocked. 
And so if we saw what looked like a ransomware attack or what looked like somebody copying many files, uh, we could have them automatically added here and have administrators get alerted. And they that one user account would get blocked while everyone else could continue using the server without knowing anything else is going on. Okay, so this has just been a quick overview. Um, let me show you a couple other areas. You can have two servers set up as your central servers. One is a, an active live server, another is a failover, and then if you have multiple satellites that are monitoring other servers, they will connect to whichever one is currently running. Um, event deduplication, event reminders, um, you can acknowledge errors by responding to email alerts or clicking on them in the web view or in the console itself. Endpoints do much more than just help report what's happening. Um, in this case, this is a test machine, so I have many endpoints connected in. One thing that the endpoints can do is uh, block USB and CD from being inserted. And so you can give a whitelist of individual CDs or USB drives that you want to allow. And then you can go to individual servers. Let's see, I'm just going to select my lab beast. And now I can tell it if I um, want to block or not block on that server USB drives and CDs. And in addition, for security's sake, I can be alerted if this endpoint stops reporting in. So if a user somehow um, stops the endpoint, kills the process, blocks it, whatever, we can receive alerts that something is going on with that endpoint and needs to be investigated. There are full reports we can go in and see, uh, you know, for example, file changes. We could go and look at um, any particular file. So we could say, uh, just give part of the file name, human resources, and there's what happened to that file. In addition, we could go and look at what a particular user did. Uh, we could look and see who's read or written X amount of data. And the custom data set is pretty powerful. It lets us filter on time, on dates, on any type of change that may have been seen, reads, writes, deletes, creates, and so on. Uh, we can filter down on servers by process and so on. So the reporting is pretty powerful. We can also schedule reports. Uh, creating a scheduled report looks pretty much the same as uh, generating an ad hoc report. Uh, they can also be emailed, so you can schedule a report that happens once a day, emails you a PDF, for example, of what's happened. I mentioned earlier that the database uses the embedded database. You can also specify SQL Server and you also control how long all the data is kept. So by default, the data is going to be kept for 90 days. Uh, you can turn that up or down however you need to. If you have any questions, uh, please contact us at support at poweradmin.com and we would be very happy to help you out, answer any questions, and do what we can to see that you have a successful demo. Thank you for watching.